NASCAR teams have made their annual trip to the West, arriving here in Saskatoon at this jewel of the prairies. Time to get set for two high-speed sprints on one of Canada's most exciting short tracks. Until now, the NASCAR Tour has sped through the East with three different winners in four races. LP Dumoulin captured the first victory of the season at CTMP. Then Kevin Lacroix stormed his way to his first oval win at Jucasa Motor Speedway. The Mopar man, Andrew Ranger, drove the high line at Autodrome Chaudière for his first win in two years. And with momentum on his side, the driver, the number 27, took on the streets in Toronto. Now the series heads west to Saskatoon. The True North, strong and fast, takes on the Prairies as the race to the Pinty's championship heats up. Welcome to Saskatoon. We're just on the outskirts of town here at Wyant Group Raceway as Bear Crop Science presents the Velocity Prairie Thunder Twin 125. So racing always intense here at Saskatoon. Hello and welcome. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me is Adam Ross and Todd Lewis is patrolling the pits. But Adam, it's the kickoff to the Western Road Swing. Always exciting. We've got two full championship races here tonight, both of them 125 laps in distance, both of them counting towards the season championship, and then these teams have to turn it around and get the cars ready to race Saturday night in Wetaskiwin, Alberta. These teams have a lot on their plate this week. And we're only four races into the 2018 series schedule, but the points are as tight as ever. As a matter of fact, we have a tie coming into Saskatoon. Andrew Ranger and LP Dumoulin sharing top spot in the point standings. Behind them, Cameron, Powell, and Kennington, they're all well in contention. DJ Kennington hasn't won a race since 2013. The Iron Man of the NASCAR Pinty Series loves these gritty two-lane ovals. He's got three chances in the next week to break that winless streak. I think he's got a good shot at doing just that, Dave. Wouldn't it be great to see him inducted into the Canadian Motorsport Hall of Fame as a 2018 champion in NASCAR? He has that chance. Of course, he's getting inducted along with Scott Steckley this year. But this being the start of the Western Road Swing, we have a large allotment of Western drivers joining this series as well. Noel Daller from Sherwood Park, Alberta makes his return to the series. The 27-year-old runs really well on ovals. He was fast in practice today. So was Luke Hocus. He's just making his second appearance with the series, but that number 10 Dodge was lightning quick earlier today. Another driver looking very much at home is Jamie Krizik from Grand Prairie, Alberta. Very fast and will be fun to watch here today. And Chantel Kalika making her very first start in the NASCAR Pinty Series. A daunting task to say the least but she's up to it. She does have a championship, a 2016 Truck Series championship here in Saskatoon. She'll be fun to watch here today. But with all of that said, the drivers, very emotional for this first of two races here in Saskatoon. Several drivers visited Humboldt, Saskatchewan. And with more on that, let's go down to Todd Lewis. Todd? Thanks, guys. Jason White on his number 28 is running a special Humboldt Broncos tribute scheme for this evening's event. Prior to arriving here in Saskatoon, Jason and DJ Kennington spent the day in Humboldt, Saskatchewan. DJ making a special presentation of the Humboldt Broncos hood scheme that he ran at Bristol. It was an emotional visit. The two spent time with families, with members of the Broncos organization, including time in the team's dressing room. A lot of hurt has taken place, but a lot of healing has occurred as well. The members that we lost of the Humboldt Broncos will not be forgotten. Gotten, their names are riding with the drivers tonight. Thanks, Todd. It's been a tough time for Saskatchewan. It's been a tough time for all of Canada. But tonight, it's time to get down to the business of racing. And that's right. In E3, spark plugs pool qualifying a little bit earlier on this evening. It was a 74 of Kevin Lacroix who took his seventh career NASCAR pool, a time of 14.886 seconds. That's just over 80 miles an hour. But here's the storyline from E3 spark plugs pool qualifying. The top six all covered by about a tenth of a second. It's a tight field in practice. It was a tight field in qualifying. And for tonight's command, let's go down to the front stretch. Start your engines. Ah, oh, beautiful sound on the front straightaway, Dave. A great field of cars. And talk about a crowd. We've got people at both ends of the speedway and all along the front stretch. This is a wonderful facility, and the fans generally come out for the NASCAR Pinty Series Tour when it stops here in Saskatoon. Donald Teach still searching for his very first victory in the series. Hard time believing that he's still looking for win number one. 
This is a great place to search for, that's for sure, Teach, right at home on the ovals. We had some on board with Jason White, and how about this helmet of Alex Tagliani? Well, you remember we talked about that helmet a little bit earlier on in the season. It's been riding with Alex Tagliani for most of the season, uh, done specially for him by Dustin Hudima. That'll be donated to the museum in Humboldt, Saskatchewan. Yeah, great tribute by Dustin Hudima and Alex Tagliani. On board the TCB Trailers 46 of Brett Taylor, and let's have a look at the Leland Industries starting lineup. On pole is Kevin Lacroix starting alongside the 24 of Donald Teach. Row number two has LP Dumoulin in the 47. Cole Powell in the three. We go back to the third row and Andrew Ranger alongside Mark Dilley. And starting seventh and eighth will be Alex Tagliani and DJ Kennington. Taking a look back to row number five, that's where we find Luke Hokus in the number 10. Mark Antoine Cameron, the number 22, starting alongside. Row six has Jamie Krizik in the 34. Joey McComb back behind the wheel of the number one. To row number seven we go, and Brett Taylor in the 46 is alongside the 28 of Jason White. In the eighth row, Noel Dowler in the five, and Adam Martin in the number 19. And then we round out the field with Chantel Kalika in the 43, and Larry Jackson starting in the 04. Great looking field in NASCAR Pinty Series race cars as they start to work some heat into their Goodyear Eagle tires. But before we get things underway, let's take a look at them at the E3 Spark Plugs race analysis. 125 laps was the race distance, and if there's something unique about Wyant Group Raceway, I think it's that all of the drivers are comfortable racing here, so it's tough to find any advantage over anybody else. Let's go to pit road with Todd. Yeah, guys, something to keep an eye on tonight with our pole sitter. Kevin Lacroix suffered a pre-race injury, jumping over the wall, twisted his ankle very badly. He was swollen. He's been icing it down. He was hobbling around on crutches earlier today. Spoke with him, and he said, should be fine to get on the gas, though, but it's worth keeping an eye on as we get set for two races tonight. I saw him driving the golf cart in the pit area earlier on. I said, Are you sure you're okay? Big smile on his face. He's going to gut this one out. Starting on pole, you really have to. As the field bunches up, looking for the green flag, the first of two 125 lap races. The Velocity Prairie Thunder Twin 125s are underway. doing a great job with starts and restarts this season, Dave. And I've got to say, if you're going to hurt an ankle, you're definitely better to hurt your throttle foot than you are your brake foot. Talking with Cole Powell, you see just ahead of this Leland Industry 02 of Mark Dilley. You see him in the green and white number three. Cole Powell, I asked him, is there any track you've been on before that is like this track here at Wyatt Group Raceway. He said, not really. It feels a little bit like Kawartha outside of Toronto and Ontario, but it's a lot shorter, so it's its own animal. There is Cole Powell working alongside the 27 of Andrew Ranger. Ranger looking to string together three wins in a row after winning at an Autodrome show the air and on the streets of Toronto. And one thing, did you notice Cole Powell's eyes when Andrew Ranger slid up and, and hit him right in the driver's door? Cole never even batted an eyelash. I think sometimes people don't realize how normal it is to be going through a corner with eight tires in effect than it is four. I mean, you rub, you touch, it's just part of the business. It didn't even affect him. Usually you see the number 27 of Andrew Ranger up in that high line, but the cops build all number three of Cole Powell is up there, and now it looks like it's clear to the inside as he tries to get back down, but Ranger is still there, and he lets him know. Little tickle to the back end as Cole Powell gets back in line there. <laughs> a little bit of a nudge in turn four. And the 18 of Alex Tagliani got involved in that one as well, and he rode a happy pin Chevrolet. It's a good three-way battle brewing here. And as they duke it out like that, you see Andrew Ranger closing, and again, they lose a little bit of ground to this lead trio in front of them. Kevin Lacroix in the 74, Donald Teach in the 24, and L.P. Dumoulin in the 47. Donald Teach has been keeping the 74 of Kevin Lacroix honest every step of the way so far as we ride on board with Teach. But so far, it's been a battle here in the first of the Velocity Prairie Thunder Twin 125, presented by Bearcroft Science. 
races number five and six of the NASCAR Pinty Series, the Velocity Prairie Thunder Twin 125s, presented by Bayer Crop Science, is brought to you by Mopar. We built it, we know it. By E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn. By Pinty's, making great food fun. And by AGI, makers of Batco, Westfield, and West Steel. On board the AGI backed car of Chantal Kalika, who's doing very, very well turning her first laps in competition in the NASCAR Pinty Series. It's, it's not an easy task to jump in this field and try and hold your own. You know, it's definitely not. She comes from a racing family. She races different cars here at Wyatt Group. But this is tough competition. She's holding her own out there, Dave. Battle for the lead, though, and we have our first lead change of the afternoon, and it's the 24 of Donald Teach who crosses the line in the top spot for the first time. Donald Teach, of course, that car prepared out of the Scott Steckley stables. Scott Steckley always ran pretty well when we came to Saskatoon. No surprise, there's a good setup under the car, and you know Donald Teach can wheel a car on an oval track. There's a good look at a battle for 16th place. That's Adam Martin of Johnsonville 19, and back on board, Chantel Kalika. You can really see Adam Martin's car pushing off the corner, and then it snaps loose. You can see how far the wheels are turned to the left. How about this, though, for a gaggle of race cars? You've got Cole Powell, you have Andrew Ranger of the 18 of Tangley, and just ahead you have LP Dumoulin as well, as they're all nose to tail at the front. And if you compare this to other races we run, as you look at Tagliani getting off the corner a little bit lower than Andrew Ranger, and Ranger all over the back end of Cole Powell, 125 laps is basically a tire run in our series. So they're all going to try to stay in contention. I think it's a bit early for anyone to really be pushing the envelope. And you've got to know their spotters are talking to the drivers, reminding them, look, we've got another race. 90 minutes after you finish the first race, so keep the corners on. Well, that's some of the drivers were talking about that in the pits before this race started. What do you do in this race? Do you push hard and try and get the win, act like it's a sprint race? Or do you have to save your stuff for the second feature race of the afternoon? It is a tough dilemma, and it's definitely unique here in the NASCAR Pinty Series. The only time we have twin 120, 125 lap races in the entire schedule. And it's cool. I like different. Different is a lot of fun. It, it, it's a different style of racing for these guys. And if we're on board with someone that suits incredibly well. DJ Kennington, if there's anyone that's good at conserving a race car and finishing a race with defenders all on it, it's DJ Kennington who's riding right now in seventh, but challenging for sixth. Maybe a little bit of a bump there on the 18 of Alex Tagliani just to get him up and out of the group. DJ Kennington, you mentioned success here in Saskatoon, second in both events last year. Just that one quick burp of the throttle you could hear in the middle of the corner was enough for Tagliani to get the advantage down the straightaway. A note to the Castrol Edge Dodge of DJ Kennington running the new Mopar M1 spec engine as well. So a little bit different setup than he's used to going away from the built motors and all the weight on the front end of that race car. The Mopar M1 frees up that weight to be moved around the race car. Cole Powell gives a bump to LP Dumoulin. and that's a battle for the third position. They're right behind Kevin Lacroix in the 74. And whatever Cole Powell does, Andrew Ranger has a decision to make. Good luck a little deeper in the field once again to that now three-way battle as the GM Pie number 22 Chevrolet of Mark Antoine Cameron has jumped up and tagged on to the back of Alex Tagliani in the Rona EpiPen Chevrolet. Back to the battle we were talking about. Cole Powell right on the back end of LP Dumoulin. Dumoulin leaving himself just a slight cushion in front of him. He's not right up on the rear bumper of Kevin Lacroix, but it looks like he's trying to time himself to see where he might be able to make a move. I mean, anywhere you look on this track at this point, there's a battle for 10. So you've got battles all over the place. That's Luke Hokus and the 34 of Jamie Krizik, a couple of Western drivers doing very well. And just in behind, another Western driver, Noel Dowler. And we go on board with yet another Western <laughs> driver, Brett Taylor from Calgary, Alberta. So we got four Western Canadians duking it out in a row. That's a battle for 10th, right on back to 13th. 
Brett Taylor is one of the drivers in this series really looking forward to running here. He has a number of starts behind the wheel of a super late model, so he's confident in his knowledge of the track. He's just trying to get a, com a comfortable feel behind the wheel of that CBRT number 46. It's worth mentioning as we look at this battle for a second, these drivers are qualifying right now, Dave, for race number two. The fastest lap every any driver turns in race one is what's going to count to set the lineup for race number two. So yet another unique way we're racing tonight in Saskatoon, and you're watching it all on TSN. Welcome back to Wyant Group Raceway, race number five of the 2018 NASCAR Pinty Series. And we ride on board the number 28 Humboldt Broncos backed entry of Jason White, a fine supporter of Canadian motorsport, looking to become the first Western Canadian driver to record 100 starts in the NASCAR Pinty Series. That is something for the resume. That is a lot of frequent flyer miles as well, Dave. <laughs> It'll happen uh, in the early part of 2019. He won't get it this year, but 2019, we look forward to celebrating that milestone with Jason. The business is picking up. They're putting cars a lap down. That's Adam Martin. They just went around the outside as Andrew Ranger running in the sixth position just ahead of Alex Tagliani. This is a good track, though, to navigate lap traffic. You do have two solid grooves as you see the leaders move up to the outside. But back at the front, this is second, third, and fourth. You have Kevin Lacroix in the 74, the WeatherTech Dodge of LP Dumoulin, and the number three of Cole Powell. Alex Tagliani now up the inside of Andrew Ranger, and this is something we're used to. Not these two battling for the sixth position, but Andrew Ranger being on the outside of a two-car battle on an oval track. <laughs> he loves it up there. It just seems to be his safe place. I mean, he found a special line at Autodrome Chaudière a little bit earlier on in this season, and he picked up about five car lengths each and every lap. So sometimes there is some magic in the long way around the track. Mark Antoine Cameron looking pretty racy as well on that GM Paye number 22 Chevrolet. And again, you talked about Scott Steckley in the corner of the 22 racing team entries. All of them. Donald Teach, you have um, the 18 of Alex Tagliani, and you have Mark Antoine Cameron. For Cameron, still a relative newcomer to the oval tracks. He has done a full season in the NASCAR Pinty Series, but he admits his confidence isn't quite there. He can lean on somebody like Scott Steckley, and that helps him. It just gives him the push he needs. There's a lot of knowledge in that pit. This is racing overload. We've got side-by-side, side-by-side battles. You have the battle for second on the left-hand side of your screen featuring Dumoulin and Powell and Lacroix. That's now settled out to single file in a battle for seventh with Tag Cameron and the 27 of Andrew Ranger. Cameron with a nice run there at a turn number four. Almost clear of the Ranger 27, but he didn't slide up. I think now it'll be safe for him to slide up to the wall and run that racing line and see if he can keep pace with Tagliani. On board, the number 27 will park Dodge of Andrew Ranger. Three top fives and seven top tens in his career here in Saskatoon. And I'm a little bit shocked to see him down in the bottom half of the top ten with the strength that he's shown in the last two starts of the season. Yeah, he's not showing the, the dynamite speed that we saw, of course, in Chaudière, but that's also a testament to the setups under the race cars in front of him as well. We've got a stout field of cars and drivers led with great crew chiefs. We talk about it every race. Good equipment, good drivers, and good crews, and the cream rises to the top, and there's a lot of it. Battle for 13th now. Krizik in the 34 and the 46. Uh, Brett Taylor, we ride on board the CBRT. Number 46, Taylor dives to the inside. And you can see a little wiggle out of the 34 of Krizik down the back straightaway. Yeah, Jamie Krizik with some handling woes, I'd say, on that race car. Just not able to keep it down in the racing line. And I think Brett Taylor, be being an up-and-coming racer, still learning his craft, he's trying to figure out how to make that move to where he can get to the inside and maintain track position. Battle now between a pair of teammates and Tagliani and Mark Antoine Cameron. Cameron really coming alive now in the GM Pie number 22 for Chief Randy Steckley. Turning the wrenches on that one and giving some guidance from the top of the box as well. With no yellow flags and nearing the halfway point of this race, it's time to go. 
Yeah, it's hard to believe now we're already at the halfway point or just about there. Normally, we'll have a few caution flags in this race, especially historically. That's generally the way it's gone. And what this pace has done is put a handful of drivers a lap down. We talked at the beginning about Kevin Lacroix on that sprained ankle. You've got to think it's starting to throb inside the race car. Well, now he's in a tough battle with the driver of the 17, DJ Kennington. Focus on the eyes of DJ Kennington. Battle for fourth spot. As you see, Lacroix has pushed up a little bit. That usually indicates the car might be a little bit tight. Can't quite keep it down on the bottom as Mark Antoine Cameron's able to do in his Chevrolet Camaro. And Kennington wanting to take over that spot for Lacroix has to be mindful of what's happening behind him as well. That's still a pretty tightly bunched pack. You can see a lap car up ahead. There's LP Dumlin. Four cars ahead of DJ Kennington. So you've got lead lap cars, lap down cars. There's a lot for these drivers to think about. With the 17 of DJ Kennington, though, this may be his best chance to visit Victory Lane here in 2018. A big wiggle out of the 74 of Kevin Lacroix, but a lot of people saying that DJ Kennington, oh, he's hungry for a win. Take nothing away from the driver of the 17 car, but just luck hasn't gone his way so far in 2018. Will it here today? There's no doubt he's one of the best race car drivers to ever race in our series. He a, holds a, the record in NASCAR Touring Series for most consecutive wins. That's all Touring Series. I mean, DJ Kennington is going to win more races. It, it, it's just one of those things. Just a matter of when, isn't it? But he clears the bumper to bumper total lubricants number 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Good luck from the bumper camera of the 17 Castrol Edge Dodge. That was a great camera view to, to look at the different setups on these race cars. Some of the cars really lift the front end coming out of the corner where some stay a little more level. And look at this, Donald Teach in heavy traffic. Let's see if LP Dumoulin is able to close the gap on the leader and Brad Taylor coming down the racetrack. That hurts Dumoulin in the second spot. Dumoulin had an opening and had a run together as we've got more side-by-side -side action. Deeper in the top 10, that's the 22 and 18 still going at it. They still haven't been able to separate, but they have closed the gap onto the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. That has been an ongoing battle. Now Dumoulin finally to the inside of Jamie Krizik, but he's lost a few car lengths and Brett Taylor giving Krizik a bump in the corner. Well, Brett Taylor sees this as his opportunity too, if he can make it down and follow the leaders through. Sometimes the lap cars can do that to pick up positions. He hasn't been able to because there are more lead lap cars coming through on the inside. And again, that comes with experience, Dave. It's all timing and opportunity and how you balance all of that. As Cole Powell now to the inside of Brett Taylor and Jamie Krizik. We'll see if Brett Taylor can maybe follow Cole Powell through. Nose to tail now. In that battle with the 74 and the 18, Kevin Lacroix from saint Eustache, Quebec, picked up his first oval track win in NASCAR competition a little bit earlier on this season. And it's really shocking that it's this late in his NASCAR career that we're talking about his first NASCAR victory on an oval track after being so dominant on so many road and street courses. But Lacroix had been snake bitten every time the series stopped on an oval until this year at Jucasa. But he got it done, and that sort of gave him a little boost of confidence and a little skip in his step. Unfortunately, the skip in his step this weekend is on crutches. Is on, yeah, absolutely. As Mark Antoine Cameron, it all, almost as though he looked to make it three wide, thought better of it as Tagliani trying to work that pass on Kevin Lacroix. Almost three wide there with the lap car, the Humboldt Broncos, number 28 of Jason White, a veteran driver. He's no doubt watching his mirrors and seeing this battle behind. He got way up out of the groove and out of the way of these lead group cars and gave them plenty of room to race on the inside. Yeah, he gave them all sorts of racing room as Mark Antoine Cameron working the inside of the 18, Alex Tagliani. He'll drive it deep into turn one. 
side by side off of the corner, but there you see it. The beauty of this Wyatt Group Raceway. Up on the outside is not a penalty because you can get a great drive down the back straightaway, and Jamie Krizik is using it right now to defend his position. On the 46 of Brett Taylor gets a little bit loose under power. Now they'll go to the outside of Chantel Kalika and that AGI 43 will ride on board with Chantel for a little while as we see Jamie Krizik gone past on the outside. We should see the green and yellow number 46 of Brett Taylor next. Malika currently running in the 17th position. And gaining valuable laps, valuable experience. And that's the thing is you just want to get as much seat time as you can. You can practice these cars for hundreds of miles, but nothing gives you the experience of in-race competition. Well, and the Kalika team learned that today because they went out for practice, had a couple of minor mechanical issues that cost them a bit of time in the pits, cost them some practice time, but they've got that rectified here for the race. Good look there, the Leland Industries 02 of Mark Dilley. Byron Nelson from Leland, nearby Wadima, Saskatchewan. Loads of guests in attendance here today, all cheering on. Mark Dilley currently in a battle with the one of Joey McCall. We'll be back to Saskatoon here on TSN. Donald Teach from Wachatel, Quebec, leads the Velocity Prairie Thunder Twin 125s here in Saskatoon. He's been solid starting on the outside of the front row, passing leader at the time, Kevin Laquan. He set sail. He did set sail, but LP Dumoulin, that WeatherTech 47, is slowly reeling in that 24 machine. He's going to have to do it in a hurry. We're already at lap 88 of 125 in the first of two Velocity Prairie Thunder Twin 125s. Mark Antoine Cameron. Whoa, and, trouble. Yeah, there is trouble up in three and four. The 19 of Adam Martin, and it looks like the 10 of Luke Hocus. Wow, and Adam Martin has made significant contact. Oh. Obviously not with the left side of the Hocus, because <laughs> that looks pretty darn good. I was going to say, it, it, not a lot of damage to the 10 car, but there you see it. That's the story on the Johnsonville, number 19, of Adam Martin, the car out of the Dave Jacobs Racing Stable. We'll have another look at it. Down into the corner. Oh, it looks like some contact between Cole Powell and Luke Hocus, and you can see right there, Adam Martin had the brakes locked up. Couldn't get the car turned. Todd's on the scene. The 19 has arrived on pit road. You can see the significant body damage. The crew wants him to move up so that he is within the pit box. They're going to cut away the tie downs for that hood. They'll remove that. They have duct tape standing by to try to secure some of that other body work, if necessary, to get Adam Martin back out. Left rear on the 27 car also being reported as a problem. A left rear tire going down. They're having a look. They're changing a spring rubber. They did a handling adjustment to the right rear as well. Part of the problem with the Adam Martin 19 to go back to it is all the ductwork that sits behind that front bumper. They've either got to get it back in place so that so everything gets cooled or rip it out of the car, Dave. More changes on the Humboldt Broncos, number 28. As the wrench goes in the back window, the Jason White automobile. But there's a good look at your race leader under caution for the first time here at Wine Group Raceway. Donald T is a man out front. It was in 2008 that NASCAR approached the group here at Wine Group Raceway to hold an event. They were nervous, but it was Todd Nickel, a Western Series driver, who told them to do it. The man from Sherwood Park, Alberta, actually put his money where his mouth was. He backed it. He guaranteed success, and he said, if it doesn't work out, I will pay the bill, and look at where we're at now. Filled grandstands and a great race on the track. Wow, great restart for Donald Teach, and the grandstands continue to fill, Dave. It's a fairly early start tonight, but the fans continue to pour in. Back it away after restart number one. I'm Dave Bradley. Adam Ross is with me up in the booth. Todd Lewis is in the pits. And a big thank you goes out to the folks at Bayer Crop Science. They are the ones sponsoring tonight's event. They have a huge crowd. You can see the white tent in the background. Yeah. That's where they're all hanging out here tonight. I'm told they have more than 600 guests. That's Mark Dilley trying to put on a show for his guests who are at the other end of the racetrack <laughs> and turn three and four. Gives LP Dublin a push. I think Dublin's got a problem. He cannot hold that car down. 
take a look at the 70. Yeah, you're right. Something is gone amiss in the WeatherTech Dodge as the 46 of Brett Taylor sneaks underneath. Could this be shades of Jucasa a little bit earlier on this season where the 47 had a tire go down and it took him a few laps to get down and into the pit area. He, he does not have a tire flat, but he definitely has something gone amiss because that car will just not turn the way it has been for the last many laps. Now Noel Daller in the MCO 5 going by on the inside, and there's Chantel Kalika, next car to go around LP Dumoulin. We should mention, too, big points shakeup possible here. The 27 of Andrew Ranger had problems changing the spring rubber in the pits, went down a lap. So we'll have to keep that on the radar. I mean, we talked about how tight the points are among the entire top five. And the people that look to benefit right now, Cole Powell is right there, Cameron and DJ Kennington. There's third, fourth, and fifth, and they're all battling for solid top five results. Yeah, Cole Powell currently in second spot. There's Alex Tagliani. Cameron has been quietly inside the top five all night. A very clean race car and one that appears to be handling very well. different onboard views from the Castrol Edge Dodge of DJ Kennington. Now we ride along the bumper to bumper total lubricants, number 74. And LP's problems have gotten bigger, Dave. That I believe that right front has now gone down. You look at the front right corner of the car. It is dug into the racetrack, but he can't get across. There's so much traffic. Now you can see the back end, the left rear is way up in the air as the car is now down on the rim on the right front. LP Dumoulin is doing his best to try and wheel around the track and not spin out. WeatherTech.ca on the corner panel of that 47, and he's got to get it to pit road fairly quickly because that could rip the right front bodywork apart. He's down and in pit lane now. Now it is up to the crew. Green flag is still out, so the number 47 will go at least one lap down, maybe several. Todd? Right front down on that 47. The crew trying to get a bar underneath so they can get the jack under, then get the car up in the air to change that bright front. Leaders coming around, 37 will go behind. Not much left of that right front Goodyear, but at least it didn't come apart on him. That gets into the brake system. It gets into everything if that tire comes apart. You know, though, if it did come apart, the debris may have given him the caution that he needed, but he hung out there as long as he could. Well, the concern at that point, if the rubber gets into the, the running works, is race number two. He's got to be ready to start the second race. If you got to rebuild the brake system on the car, that could be a huge nightmare as LP Dumoulin back out on the racetrack among the race leaders. He is among them, but he has several laps down as Alex Tagliani, Cameron, and now DJ Kennington move around the outside. 16th place is where the 47 of LP Dumoulin is now being marked. Five laps down to your race leader. And I'd, I'd like to pull the drivers, but this feels worse for a race car driver than being out of the race. What, being able to keep up with the leaders? Well, no, having to keep on driving five laps down, you might make up a position by the time the race ends, maybe two, but as a race car driver, it's no fun to be out there when you're not contending. Very right there, is the 22 and 18. These two have been glued together the entire distance of this 125 lap race with now 11 laps to go last time past the line but Alex Tagliani and Mark Antoine Cameron and a pair of Chevrolet Camaros have not been able to separate from each other. Andrew Ranger behind Luke Hocus in that number 10 Dodge and giving him a push going into the corner with 10 laps to go the story right now Dave can Cole Powell catch Donald Teach they are two Drivers who have not won a race in our series, and laps are winding down. It's one thing to catch someone, it's something entirely different to actually execute a pass. Cole Powell about a second adrift the last time they crossed the line here at Wyatt Group Raceway. Nine laps to go, that is uh, Noel Dowler in the number five. 
he's really done a, a great job here today running a ninth spot. And he's on the lead lap, so that is not a battle for position, but this is Alex Agliani still trying to hold off the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron. Should mention, Donald Teach is still your race leader. This is a battle for third spot on the racetrack with the Rona EpiPen Chevrolet and the GM Paillet Chevrolet battling it out. They've been pretty clean with each other, though. Well, and you can see right now Cameron trying to set up a move. He's trying to enter the corner high, come across the apex, and drive off low. He just can't get that forward bite right, to come off the corner below Tagliani. Some positive reinforcement from the spotters. Coming up to the back end of the number three of Cole Powell. So, so teammate drivers, it's also teammate spotters. So they, they want to be as courteous as they can, but laps are winding down and every position matters. There's no friends at the end of the race. Under five to go now as we ride on board your second place runner, Cole Powell. There is your race leader, the number 24 of Donald Teach. He made a start in the NASCAR Xfinity Series in Loudoun, New Hampshire, driving for car owner Matteo Gosselin. Three laps to go, so a little added confidence running in the higher ranks of NASCAR. Donald Teach has a few laps to hang on here for his first win. All he's got to do is hang on. There's a little bit of traffic for the leader, but he's got a nice cushion back to Cole Powell, and Cole Powell's got to be driving with one eye in the rearview mirror because he's got pressure coming from behind. Working lap traffic here in three and four. There is the white flag, one to go for your race leader. One more time around, Donald Teach gets through one and two clean. He's got about eight car lengths on the three of Cole Powell. Now into three and four for the final time. He has been so fast on the ovals. He's been so close in NASCAR. Now it's his time to shine. Donald Teach will take race number one here in Saskatoon. Cole Powell runner-up Tagliani rounds out the podium with Cameron and Cannington having good points days. For the first time, a Chevrolet Camaro will visit Victory Lane in the NASCAR Pinty Series here in Canada in 2018. Nice shot for Joey McComb to come home eighth. Noel Dowler with a ninth place finish and Brett Taylor with a solid top 10. Take a look at the rest of the finishing order as Andrew Ranger 12th spot. There you see LP Dumoulin all the way down in 16. Dave, this will be our fifth Victory Lane celebration of the season, but I dare say this is going to be the most exciting celebration. Todd Lewis is trackside with one excited race car driver. We have seen first-time winners before here in Saskatoon, and we have another one as Donald Teach smiles, has a little slip on the hood. First victory for the Chevrolet Camaro. Show me. You have. Come with me. Donald Teach has talked about winning several times he got one for the first time here in saskatoon that kid was with me today you know i read a lot of him and he was with me in the car you know that's inspiration that, that he was a leader too so we are a good good car good team and we went finally won one you know i, I can see you know I, i'm amazing about yeah we got another race to do but you know we got to be proud of that that, that race you know uh, we're looking to win since uh, last year and we were so close a uh, couple of times and uh, tonight that's the first one and it's not the, the last one. We got a good card. Thanks Scott to, uh, to Scott uh, and his team, Greg, the crew chief. What a job they did and all my team. You know. A great Thank job you. by the 24 team. They are the winners of race number one here in Saskatoon. You can hear the emotion and the voice of Donald Teach, his first win. And welcome back to Victory Lane for longtime crew chief Greg Gibson as Tony Spiteri from Pinty's with the hardware handing it out here in Saskatoon. Race number one did not disappoint. A Velocity Prairie Thunder Twin 125s will be back with round two. An awesome display by the Canadian military Skyhawks, the paratrooper team here in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. 
Welcome back to the Velocity Prairie Thunder Twin 125s presented by Bear Crop Science. Once again, I'm Dave Bradley and Adam Ross joins me. Adam, an exciting, very, very quickly done race in the first Twin 125. We went well past the halfway point before we got a yellow flag. And how great is that for Donald Teach, who gets his first ever NASCAR Penny Series win? How about three cars from 22 racing in the top five starting to show their dominance in the series? And Cole Powell ruined it. It would have been first, second, and third for Team Steckley, but Cole Powell finishing second, and then it was Tagliani and Cameron. But I wouldn't be surprised if we have another first-time winner in our second 125. Cole Powell's going to be up there. Mark Antoine Cameron's going to be up there. Well, and, and those are two first-time winners, but they're also up there in the point standings as well. And the big story coming out of the first 125, problems for the 47 of LP Dumoulin and for the 27 of Andrew Ranger. And the problems, I think, are bigger for Ranger. I mean, Dumoulin was running at the front, had a flat tire, lost laps, getting to the pits, finished 16th. Andrew Ranger was never a contender in that race. I mean, he was able to keep up with the pack at the beginning, but he drove his way to a 12th place finish. That's all the car had. And so now they get the opportunity to make some changes, try and make the cars better, fix maybe if they got into something like the 19 of Adam Martin. But there is a lot of action pit side, and let's go down to it. Join Todd Lewis. Todd? Yeah, guys, I can give you a little more information on that 27 car. The issues for Andrew Ranger was power steering. They lost the power steering during that first race. They have replaced the power steering box to get that working, but now they're working on balancing the car. Andrew also told me the car was really pushing during that first race, and he was having troubles hanging on to it. As we move through the rest of the field, the 24 of Donald Teach is going to be pretty much put gas in it, put new tires on it, and send them back out. That was a rocket ship. Little more extensive work on the 18 of Alex Tagliani. He, of course, finished third, but he'd like to move up in the podium. And the fourth place finisher, the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron, also a strong result, but they too would like to move up just a little bit, give Mark Antoine Cameron uh, another victory. We'll move over here and find Kevin Lacroix, who's sitting down and resting that ankle just a little bit. Tell me how your car was and how you're feeling after that first race. Well, uh, not feeling really good. The car was uh, not great, but, you know, it's... Uh you know, we, we have to count on luck yeah, with these cars. The uh, car was uh, really tight, uh, pushing, not turning good in, in practice and qualifying. We keep the same car, and in the race, it's uh, the rear is sliding everywhere. So, you know, the track temperature changes everything, and uh, we have to count on luck. But we still working hard on the car to make it better. But uh, we'll see uh, for, for the next race. No problem getting on the gas with that ankle? No, <laughs> no, fortunately. Okay. Kevin Lacroix says he's going to be okay. He'll gut it out for race number two. Going to be another exciting one here in Saskatoon. An interesting story to follow, to be sure, Todd. But Kevin Lacroix is a tough driver, and you know what? Something tells me he's going to gut it out. The faster your race car is, the less you notice you're being you're overheated or you're in pain. Kevin Lacroix has a fast car underneath him. He'll be able to overcome this and get to the end. So many storylines to follow for the second race here today. And when we return, we'll bring you the second of the Twin 125, the Velocity Prairie Thunder, presented by Bear Crop Science. And the sun is a little lower in the prairies as we get set for the second of two Twin 125s here in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Welcome back to the NASCAR Pinty Series and problems on the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. It's not the ankle, it's getting this car started. Yeah, they do, whether it's the battery or the starter or still too much heat in the car to get it to turn over, they'll get a bump start and he'll be able to take his scheduled starting spot. Now remember, Dave, this lineup was set using the fastest lap turned by every driver in race number one. And lo and behold, the driver who finished 16th is going to start on the pole of race number two alongside the winner, Donald Teach. LP Dumoulin in the 47 starts on pole. Cole Powell will start in the third spot alongside Kevin Lacroix in the number 74. And I've got to think, what's interesting to me about LP Dumoulin, we always talk about crew chiefs. LP Dumoulin has Robin McCluskey as his crew chief. He's been around racing a long time. A lesser known name who has been with the team more than 10 years, Benoit Lagagnier. And you talk to LP Dumoulin, he doesn't like to talk to, about one without talking about the other. He said Benoit and Robin have a great relationship. They work well together. And his program on ovals and road courses are so much better this year. And it shows with him starting on the pole. And he's so confident every time the rig pulls into the track, they unload the race car. He at least knows he has a great starting point at every event.
line he goes to. And it is showing in the results so far this year, unfortunately, in race number one, not so much with a 16th place finish. Nova, starting on the pole for this race takes a little bit of the edge off, Dave. But the track conditions are going to change here. The, as I mentioned, the sun is a little bit lower. Things are starting to cool off. It is a cool evening here in Saskatoon. And all of these crew chiefs and all of these drivers had to talk about what are we going to do to the race car to keep up with track conditions? Todd is pit side. Yeah, fellas, just before we go green, a quick update on our pole sitter for race number two. The 47 of LP Dumoulin had some tough luck with a flat tire in race number one, but the car was good. Crew chief Robin McCluskey said a little bit loose. They made some mild Minor adjustment for the change in track conditions. He should be fast once again. And the 24 of Donald Teach starts alongside. That's exactly where he started in race number one, en route to his first ever NASCAR victory. So you have to know, he is buoyed inside that car. He's riding a wave of confidence. And into race number two, that confidence didn't have much time to go away. So he'll be coming out with excitement here in race number two as the field bunches in three and four, looking for the green flag this time on the front straightaway. It's LP Dumoulin, it's Donald Teach, and we're back underway here in Saskatoon. save your car for anymore. You have time to fix before the next stop in Edmonton. And so now the gloves do come off. 125 laps. LP Dumoulin in the lead, but look at Cole Powell there battling for second alongside Donald Teach. And they had some local series cars on the track between these two races. You can see the amount of fluid and oil dry that was put down in one and two. Doesn't look like it's causing a huge bit of problem, but these drivers really happen to be mindful. Watch the dust still coming up in the corner. On board the Leland Industry 02 of Mark Dilley. One of the drivers who came into this event with the most starts here in Saskatoon at 10. Chasing another one of those drivers in DJ Kennington and now making contact with the Castro Ledge Dodge. Yeah, that car got really tail happy behind them. Now we're on board with Brett Taylor in the 46. This is a great education for Taylor. Mark Dilley hasn't done a lot of Pinty Series racing here in 2018. As a matter of fact, this is his very first start behind the wheel of the O2, but it looks like he hasn't left. He's very much at home behind the wheel of that Ford Fusion. And when Byron brings the guests from Leland Industries, they all come out from Wadena. Mark Dilley has to be in the field. He always does a good job. There's a good look at the one of Joey McComb. Another driver hasn't had much action in 2018, but doing very well for himself, keeping all fenders on that car. And, and he's been to the races. I mean, he's the general manager of CBRT, but he's pretty good behind the wheel as well right now, trying to hold off. Noel Dower in the Empire Mechanical number five. Noel Dower advanced the most spots in race number one, Dave. We should mention at the front of the field, Cole Powell is in second spot. Donald Teach has dropped back to third. Kevin Lacroix, Alex Tagliani round out the top five behind the 47 of LP Dumoulin, your race leader. You know, watching Cole Powell and watching him on all of the oval tracks this year, he really dissects a racetrack. He, he controls that car all the way around the racetrack. You watch some drivers, they'll throw a car into the corner and power it off the corner. Cole Powell, it's hard to explain the way he tackles an oval track, but it's impressive to watch. And he's never been here coming to this race. He's not even watched a race. He said he watched a couple on TV, but of course, Jason Hathaway, his driver, coach, team manager, has been here. He's had four top fives and eight starts, six top tens behind the wheel of the three. So if you're gonna have a coach in your corner, that's a good guy to be there. He was also the rookie of the year in the NASCAR Modified Tour, and he would have been to racetracks against that competition where some of them had raced 50 times or more on the same track, and he's got to get up there and contend. So when you put yourself against tough competition, you achieve more. There's another one, the 28 of Jason White, the Humboldt Broncos. Dodge Challenger battling with the 10 of Luke Hocus, the Dodge-backed entry. 
There's Hocus just ahead of the 28 of Jason White as we ride on board. The driver from Sun Peaks, British Columbia. You can see the sun is mostly set here in Saskatoon. Luke Hocus, Luke Hocus running in the 13th spot. Jason White in 14th. That looked like smoke almost out the back of LP Doolin's number 47. Could still be that speedy try in turns one and two, but not affecting the leader too much. LP Dumoulin is well out in front. LP Dumoulin from 20 Vier, Quebec in the WeatherTech number 47 continues to lead, but the number three of Cole Powell and the number 24 of Donald Teach are closing in. Right on your bumper, now corner. Get a little help from his spotter, but once you've gotten nudged up and out of the way, he knew he was on his way by. The best information Cole Powell got there was he's by himself. Yeah. So you know you've got room to come down. And you saw he backed off a little bit, got back down towards the yellow line. That's a little bit deeper in the field now, the 27 of Andrew Ranger. Under some pressure from the 0-2 of Mark Dilley. And the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron, and he fell back, remember, a long way on the start of this race, so Cameron trying to climb his way back towards the front. It's always hard when you fall back. You lose so many spots because the field is bunched so tightly. But here he is working on the back end of the 0-2 of Mark Dilley. It's a battle for eight spot. A little further back, Noel Dowder, then Brett Taylor getting sideways in four, just ahead of Luke Hocus in that 10. Both of them running yellow stripes on the back bumper, which of course means they're Justin's Rookie of the Year contenders, Dave. And how about Brett Taylor? I mean, he struggled at times in the 2018 season. A battle for the lead now. The three of Cole Powell to the inside on the 24 of Donald Teach. They're side by side in through three and four. Man, that came out of nowhere. Cole Powell closed in and immediately to the bottom. So Donald Teach up on the outside where you can make it work, but definitely the inside groove is a preferred place to be. Said it was a battle for lead. It's an actually a battle for second spot as the 47 of LP Dumoulin is out in front. And now Cole Powell has to back off a little bit. He'll drop back into third spot. You don't want to run side by side for too long. And that's what we, we just actually talked about was Cole Powell and Donald Teach could really help LP Dumoulin if they start to back among themselves. Yeah, if you're running side by side and LP Dumoulin is able to run by himself, he's now in the lap traffic as he goes around the 43 of Chantal Kalika. But if they run side by side, that'll let the WeatherTech Dodge open up that gap in front. Andrew Ranger back up towards the outside groove. Mark Dilley trying to get down to the bottom, but again, just so hard to get onto the throttle to, to pick up down the straightaway. Ranger knows that, so he can run the high side and feel at ease knowing they really can't get a huge run unless he makes a mistake. Now, some of that oil dry was down on the inside of turn number two, and it does affect, appear to be affecting the runoff, especially to that inside lane. And a little bit of bump and run there from the GM Pie number 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron. That's the way you do it. Get on the inside. You push the driver out to the outside. Boy, and that's not a move we see Cameron use. He's still learning the craft of ovals, <laughs> and that was a harder oh. bump and not so much a run. And I don't think Dilly even intended to pass him. He just wanted Cameron to know that's not how you pass on an oval. You hit me a little too hard. That will fall back in line because he still knows Cameron's a bit faster than he is. Cameron heated up the tires, though. Have another look. This is what started it. Little bump. It pushes the Leland 0-2 of Dilly up to the outside groove. And then here's payback. And watch what happens after. So he makes the bump and Dilly checks up. He could have driven right by the inside. But I think that was more, more a lesson. It was a message. It was indeed. The 22 still out in front of the 0-2. But as I mentioned, that car not handling quite as well. It's that does heat up those Goodyear Eagles. Yeah, it'll affect both of these cars for a lap or two as leaders are working some lap traffic that's out of Martin in the Johnsonville 19. He'll move up to the outside. While second, third, and fourth are closing in on Dumoulin. Yeah, Dumoulin working lap traffic and his lead has evaporated a little bit. You see it's only a several car lengths now as he works down the inside of the 28 of Jason White. 
Jason White again moving way up to the outside. Get these leaders lots of racing room. Dumoulin gets through, and this is huge. Tiege gets through, and he's able to move right to the wall, while Cole Powell still has to pinch his car down to the bottom. But the top three now covered by a blanket as they move on to the back straightaway. So Dumoulin will be seeing a lot of the 24 in his rearview mirror. Remember, Joey McComb, who had a good run in that first race with the top 10 finish, battling with Luke Hocus. Both of them, in fact, were in the top 10 of race number one. Yeah, this is just a little bit outside the top 10 in 12th position. And a little bit more rubbing there deeper in the field. But Teach a little loose off of turn number four. That opens the door for the cops. Build all number three of Cole Powell to the inside. Powell drew all the way up to the front bumper of Teach in the corner. Then Teach pulls half a car length on the straightaway and actually rolls around the front of Powell in three and four. So Powell's better in one and two. Teach seems better in three and four. And there you go. More contact. Teach coming down a little bit off the wall on the nose of the three car as Cole Powell had a little bit of a wiggle down the back straightaway, but as they are battling side by side, you see the 47 of LP Dumoulin not really opening up that gap. Man, oh man, that, our camera crew is fantastic. That was a cool view of the back straightaway. On board quickly, your race leader here in race number two of the Velocity Prairie Thunder Twin 125s. We'll be back to Saskatoon. Raceway outside of Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me in the tower is Adam Ross and Todd Lewis is patrolling the pits for us here tonight. We ride on board your race leader in the WeatherTech Dodge, LP Jubilee. We've been on board a few different race cars tonight, Dave, but listen to how smooth the throttle is on that car. That car's handling well, but Under here fire. comes Cole Powell. Yes, as he manages to get a nose underneath the 47 and rattle the cage of the race leader just a little bit. Cole Powell has turned up the wick here with just a handful of laps, 77 laps in the books of a scheduled 125. So we're just under 50 laps to go. Still quite a bit of racing left to come, and Cole Powell just tickling the back bumper of LP Dumoulin. He didn't make contact that corner, but he is right there filling the rearview mirror of our race leader. Remember the old saying was the chrome horn. You give him a little beep in the corners just to remind him that you're there, and that's exactly what Cole Powell is doing all over the back end of the Dodge Challenger of LP Dumoulin. Here comes the Chevrolet to the inside. Man, oh man. He just gently moved the 47 car over to take the lead. And now LP Dumoulin struggling to get back on the gas. He sees an opportunity with the lap cars just ahead of the race leader and Cole Powell is in the thick of it right now. You saw how close Cole Powell ran at the 19 of Adam Martin. Don't even leave an inch for anyone to try to come up the middle of that battle. The only problem was Adam Martin was on the inside. Brett Taylor up on the outside. That's allowed a little bit of a gap now at the front of the field. Cole Powell has opened up about a six-car length lead now over the 47 of LP Dumoulin. Powell will clear Brett Taylor up out of turn four. You always want a buffer there. If you're the race leader, you, everybody wants a big lead. But when you have a car between yourself and second place, you can just rest that much harder. And LP Dumoulin bouncing off the inside. He caught a little bit of the curbing on the inside of this racetrack. This is one of his favorite oval tracks in the series. LP Dumoulin made his first oval track win here in Saskatoon. It was a green-white checker finish that LP Dumoulin took advantage of some sliding race cars, drove through to take the win. I remember that night well, Dave. And that was the year he drove on to take the NASCAR Pinty Series championship as well. Andrew Ranger in the Mopar 27 and Mark Dilley in the Leland 02 do battle. They're down between three and four. Andrew Ranger in his familiar high line. And we are under yellow. Big spin up in turn number two. Brett Taylor, the 18 of Alex Tagliani, who is in the midst of it. And the 28 of Jason White also involved in this. You saw Tagliani slowly moving off the apron of the racetrack. Big damage to the nose of the 46. We'll have another look down into one. So there's Brett Taylor going to the inside. 
of Jason White. They make contact. Tagliani with nowhere to go. Tiege and Kennington, so much easier to turn right. Let your momentum take you, Dave. And that's on board with Donald Tiege. Straight up the racetrack, avoid the wall. Here's Brett Taylor as they come down. He'll spin around. And he quickly grabbed a gear. Get that car running and back in the right direction. Todd's in the pits. 28 along pit road. It'll be another handling adjustment. Jason White was super loose in race number one, still battling that condition in race two. And Dave, that's big Mike Ernst turning the wrench in the right rear corner. Jason White's going to have 100 races in the series. I'll bet you Mike Ernst has been there for most of them. There you see your race leader, Cole Powell, staying on track through this caution period. Can he hang on to the end? Into twilight now at Wyatt Group Raceway for the second of two Velocity Prairie Thunder Twin 125s. Cole Powell will bunch the field here in three and four. He will be the leader when we go back to green on the front straightaway. LP Dumoulin starting alongside Donald Tiege in there in third. Green flags back up and we're back underway. Let's not count out DJ Kennington restarting fourth. And look at Mark Antoine Cameron. He's looking to make it three wide. He thinks better of it and slides back in line, but he's got Andrew Ranger giving him a push through the corner. Ranger wants to get up there, and he sees this as his best opportunity, but Cameron again ducking to the inside, trying to push that three wide. That 22 car has been glued to the low line all race long. And one issue is, if you lift, he's going to get run over. He's got to find somewhere to go and get on the gas. Whether he wants to make that pass or not, he definitely doesn't want to get run over by Andrew Ranger behind him. And you know Ranger's not going to lift. Driver, we haven't talked about too much in this race. This is the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. There you see the bumper-to-bumper -bumper Total Lubricants Dodge Challenger. And side note, you remember the big crash that he had at Toronto in the streets of Toronto? The team is going to fix that road course car for the Grand Prix to 20 years. And that's great news. You know, you never want to see a car out of competition for long. So good that they're going to get that fixed. And I'm sure he'll be a factor there. Now look at Tagliani looking to make it three wide. And he will as he and Mark Dilley split the number 27 of Andrew Ranger. They're still side by side by side. And I, no, nobody really lifted there. I think Ranger and Tag just beat Dilly around the corner. It's time to go. 26 laps remain. Tagliani was one of the three drivers involved. You see the damage to the back end of the Rona EpiPen Chevrolet. Not affecting him too badly, obviously, but he's trying to work his way back up to where he was. Nice view out the back of Andrew Rangers, number 27 at the 0-2 forward of Mark Dilley. Again, Ranger up high. That's nothing new. Noel Dowler, you mentioned a little bit earlier, as we now ride on board the Leland Industry 0-2. DJ Kennington up the inside of Donald Deed. That's a battle for third. Mark Antoine Cameron right behind him. There goes Tagliani to the inside of the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. A pair of Quebec drivers rubbing some sheet metal here side by side in the three and four. Laps winding down here at Velocity Prairie Thunder, a Hawaiian group raceway. And DJ Kennington sees the two leaders starting to pull away, so he's got to make his move. Now about the three of Cole Powell. You couldn't even see him in that camera shot. He's opened up a sizable lead with now 23 laps to go. 22 as they cross the line. DJ got a bump there as he had to grab a handful of wheel. He either got up on the curbing or got a little bit of front bumper from Mark Antoine Cameron. Either way, that definitely spoiled the run he had on the 24 of Donald Teach. Donald Teach's car not working as good as it did in race number one. You can see him up off the inside lane just a little bit. So floating to find some traction is the driver, the Cirque Reactor at number 24. Wow, Cameron to the inside of Kennington goes right up the race rack. Let's see if Kennington drives back on him here. Cameron didn't give him much of an opportunity on the outside, but I don't know if DJ can keep pace. 
So your race leader continues to be the number three of Cole Powell, and there is the margin he has at the front of the field ahead of the weather check, number 47 of LP Jubilee. We're getting to the end of this one, folks. Come on back on TSN. Welcome back to the sixth race of the 2018 NASCAR Pinty Series. Eight laps to go here at Wide Group Raceway just outside of Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Cole Powell continues to lead, being pressured by the 47 of LP Dubelay. The 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron is closed in as well. And I want you to remember, Dave, about 40 laps ago, Cole Powell nudged L.P. Dumoulin to drive on by. Just moved Dumoulin up the racetrack to take the lead. Dumoulin closing back in. Do you think he'll move him in, in return? Well, Cole Powell didn't nudge him. Well, he eventually did, but he bumped him considerably, just reminding L.P. Dumoulin that he was there for a, quite a few laps. We will disagree on that. <laughs> well, he did He generally moved L.P. Dumoulin. But Cole Powell obviously getting some help in his camp from the owner, Ed Hackinson, the owner of EHR, and Jason Hathaway, as mentioned earlier, Gary Mead, also in the pits, and Grunt Masters showing some guidance to the youngster, Cole Powell. Not a rookie in the NASCAR PT series, but very new, obviously, to this series and taking to it very, very well. And a bigger part of the story to me, cops build all on the hood of that race car. They just committed to the rest of the season prior to Toronto. So this is the second race night that they've been on this race car. And that is great news for that team. As now the top three are starting to bunch up. You saw LP Dumoulin take a look to the inside. Two laps to go that time past the stripe. Two laps to go in lap traffic right in front of the race leader. Where's Brett Taylor going to go? Looks like Taylor commits to the bottom of the track. There goes Powell to the outside. Powell's going to set the pick. You see how tight he is to the 46 of Brett Taylor. The white flag is waving. One more lap. Will we see another first-time winner here in Saskatoon? Powell got a great, great drive off a turn number two. Down into three. It looks like he's going to go to the inside. Can he do it for the second time tonight? A first-time winner. NASCAR Pinty Series victory. Let's go down to Todd. There's a happy three team crew chief Craig Masters. What did you tell your driver in those last few laps? Oh, we had to keep him focused there. The 47 was uh, really coming there. Actually, the 22, he was he was way quicker than all of us there, but uh, he did a good job. I'd like to thank everyone that makes this happen. Cops, Kubota, Head Hackison, Fast Eddie Chaco. What a cold and amazing job. Hopefully enjoy. we get a few more here. Go enjoy the celebration. And there is Jason Hathaway getting a kiss in. And how about some donuts for the winner? He's definitely earned them in Cole Powell putting on a show. Holding up traffic, too, on the front stretch. He didn't even hesitate as we'll take a look at the final results. Donald Teach will come home in a fourth place finish here today. Kennington Tagliani in the top six. Noel Dowler with another decent top 10 finish. Joey McComb just outside of that top 10. Brett Taylor fell down to 15th. Remember, he was involved in a yellow. How about another solid finish for the driver of the 43, Chantel Kalika. Full moon here in Saskatoon. And let's go down to victory lane. Todd? Once again, it's Saskatoon. It's a first time winner in the NASCAR Pinty Series. That's Cole Powell celebrating with that checkered flag and holding that sign up high to congratulate his crew on, the, on his team's first victory. You went one better in race number two. You finished on the podium, said you needed the car to turn just a little bit better. It was there for you tonight. Oh, they did it. Oh, this was awesome. Crew, uh, in the first race, we were just a little bit loose in the center. Uh, Hathaway and the boys here did an awesome job, just tightening it up just enough, not too much, perfect. This thing was, uh, thing was a rocket ship, um, right from lap one to, Lap 125, 47, he put some good pressure on me and I thought that lap traffic was gonna cause a little bit of an issue, but uh, man, what a what a deal. First uh, NASCAR Pinty Series win. Um, awesome to have cops build all uh, on the hood here. I didn't think we were gonna make it past Toronto and we did it, Steve, we did it, we got a win and uh, Kubota Canada, can't thank you enough. And 
and all these these crew they work they work so hard on this thing and I'm just glad I could uh, perform up to the team's expectations and we got to win. Cole Powell victorious here in Saskatoon in race number six. Guys, what a rookie season he is putting together. Just a flawless season so far here in 2018, surpassing the team's expectations, I would think. And he is now your new points leader. Unbelievable. LP Dumoulin, that's not too bad to only be three points back after that disaster in the first race. Mark Antoine, Cameron, things are still pretty tight. Let's go down to your second place finisher. LP, you were very disappointed after race number one with some bad luck. A nice bounce back in race two. Well, exactly. I mean, that was the plan. Uh, the, the weather take by Marco was really fast in the first race as well. I mean, we had a chance to win there, but uh, unfortunately, you know, on the last restart, uh, we had a flat tire. So we uh, uh, we had to stop in pit lane to change that, that tire, and it, uh, obviously. And then uh, uh, we really wanted to redeem ourselves in race two, and we did, I think. I mean, we led the most lap, and... Uh, we started from the front row, and uh, but at one point we got a little tight loose, and then uh, Cole got you know really close to us. As we uh, cooled down the tires in the last yellow, there uh, I think we had a shot to win, so we worked really hard. We were behind Cole for the last couple of laps, but uh, we've catched some uh, traffic, and it didn't help the the, the, the process, the, the process, and then. Um, uh, we could have win this race, but that's okay. The weather take Benmar team is really happy about the performance we have, and then uh, we'll keep on digging for the championship for sure. So there it is, celebrating for the first time in victory lane, the Fast Eddy Racewear crew here in Saskatoon. This NASCAR on TSN event has been brought to you by WeatherTech, the ultimate interior protection for your vehicle. By Leland Industries, a proud Canadian fastener company. And by Honey Goo from Clean Flow, one honey of lube. Boy, oh boy, Bayer Crop Science. How about them posing on the podium there with the winners? Nobody wants anything to do with the champagne spray, Dave, because we're off to Edmonton and some of them have to wear that same fire suit again. Another action-packed track, another tight oval. We saw two first-time winners here in Saskatoon. Will it be three first-time winners in a row? And remember 2017, this Western Swing is really what started Alex LeBay's launch to the championship. Who's going to rise out of Edmonton and really affirm their position atop the points? From all of us here at TSN, we'll see you next time. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.